Hi everyone, this is VK. Welcome to Smid World. Here I am with another video. In this video, we will learn about uh, ball mill liners. Main content divided into three parts. First one is the type of liners. Second one, why and where they will be used. Third one, materials and life of liners. Here the first question, why we need liners in mills? The mill lining system is in place for two reasons. First one, to preserve the mill shell from deterioration caused by wearing down against the mill chart. And uh, second one is for lifting and uh, turning mill contents, means grinding media, so that they will grind the feed material. All impact surfaces inside the mill are protected by special bolted on lining plates made from high chrome alloy that are highly resistant to abrasive wear. The feed materials for both coal and raw ball mills typically contains significant amounts of moisture which must be dried off period to grinding to avoid blockage issues downstream. Therefore, these mills will normally have an initial drying chamber fitted with liners. This drying chamber can be fitted either as a separate unit bolted on to the head section or as an integral part of the mill shell with a partition to divide the drying and grinding sections. In this application, these feed materials are typically at the softer end of the spectrum and do not need to be ground as finely as cement. Hence, one grinding compartment will be generally sufficient. So, for a coal mill, usually recommended a light classifying liners, and for a raw mills, recommended a heavy classifying liners. If the raw materials are particularly coarse, a mixed solution might be best. This could be either by replacing the first few rings, example, the first 1.5 meter of chamber with step lining or combining wave lining with classifying rings throughout the mill length. As you see in the picture, generally in raw mills, combining wave and step lines will be used for grinding the material. So, so that the classification and grinding done at a time. To get off the moisture in the material, hot air will be given to the inlet. Here cement grinding. The feed for a cement grinding unit will normally be dry and needs to be ground to a high degree of fineness. To achieve this efficiently, most mills will be split into two chambers. Here you can see the picture of mills which was split into two chambers divided by center diaphragm. First one is coarse grinding and second one is fine grinding chamber. Let us see based on this chamber what type of liners will be used in mill. Linings of the coarse grinding in first chamber and uh, fine grinding in second chamber. These linings can be divided in five types. First one head liners, second one lifting classifying liners, third one lifting liners, fourth one classifying liners, fifth one center diaphragm liners. In that inlet side slot plate and outlet side blind plate and 61 outlet diaphragm this is the sample picture of liners you can observe that type of liners where will be used see here in picture mill head liners shell liners slotted plate in diaphragm inlet side blind plate outlet side and shell liner classifying liner in second chamber and end of the mill dive slotted plate at an outlet diaphragm. We will see here after where are used all types and why. Considering the dimension and the erection of these mills. The thickness of the mill liners depends upon the mill diameter as well as on the size of the grinding media and generally fluctuates within the limit of 30 mm to 73 mm. Shape of the mill liners is usually in a rectangular shape corresponding weights are 50 to 125 kg inlet head lining these plates are used to form the inner lining on the inlet head in compartment 1 
a point at which the lining is constantly subjected to tremendous impacts from heavy grinding media each plate is bolted by two bolts or one bolt minimum for bigger plates these are very important liners safeguard of inlet area where mill shell and trunnion shaft get joined together by tight fit bolts and in first chamber we can say coarse grinding chamber and in first chamber grinding media will be bigger size approximately 100 mm balls used for grinding so impact will be highest so taking care of this lens will be safeguard for your ball mill head which cost higher in mill ball you can see in the picture here as per design conical mill head used for bigger mills and even heads for smaller mills lifting classifying linings this lining is used in one grinding compartment in raw mills especially air swept mills when the fresh granulometer is very coarse the lifting classifying lining allows filling the mill with bigger mill diameter in some cases the lifting classifying lining can be combined with a regular classifying lining in all cases this lining is only a compromise between the lifting efficiency and classification in case of coarse granulometry the solution with the step lining in the first third and classifying lining in the last part of the chamber is certainly better another important point to mention is that the lifting classifying lining takes a more volume so that uh, can apply for only for big mills you can see the picture here sketch of lifting classifying lining both one is a lifting effect one is classifying effect this type of combining liners normal used in the raw mills and coal mills where feed material will be with moisture content and single chamber mills lifting liners these liners are capable of lifting the grinding medium to higher height thus enhancing the impact capacity of the grinding medium and the production capacity of the ball mill so they are often used in the first stage of grinding you can see the picture these are certain type of lifting liners the selection of liners depends on the material which to be grind and uh, mill size now you are seeing the picture of liners height measurement by doing this you will come to know end life of liners and when liners has to be replaced in first chamber the movement of grinding medium called as carter act the phenomena will occur by the critical speed of mill rotation we discuss about this topic on another video so subscribe the channel to get more knowledge on the maintenance of the equipment in cement industry classification liners for the second chamber of the ball mill the classifying lining is the most widely used in the world the classifying lining was designed in order to respect the following philosophy when entering in the second compartment the material is semi coarse and requires more impact forces than friction or attrition to work biggest balls must then go and stay at the beginning of the second chamber at the contrary the material is much finer when arriving at the foot of the outlet diaphragm it means that more the material is flowing through the compartment and more it needs attrition to produce surface and less impact forces the it means that more the material is flowing through the compartment and more it needs attrition to produce surface and less impact forces all this to say that the classifying lining is used to classify the balls from the inlet to the outlet big balls at the inlet and small balls at the outlet the second chamber of ball mill is mainly for fine grinding therefore using small balls was known to be more efficient as this increases the surface area of the medium and improves the grinding effect for the conventional mill using a liner with the lifter however it was difficult to reduce the ball diameter drastically because the grinding efficiency extremely lowered by reverse classification where small balls gather at the inlet of the second chamber and medium sized balls gather at the outlet to solve this issue with the reverse classification a classification liner was developed the this classification liner is inclined towards the inlet of the mill to make scrapped balls roll in the direction under the influence of the rotation force of the mill large balls roll towards the inlet of the mill more easily and concentrated at the inlet of the second chamber 
classification line is normally in second chamber material will come from first chamber where it was semi grande so semi coarse material requires more impact force than friction to make this happen we need smaller ball size which are have more surface area contact with the material particles if there were no any classification liners what will happen in the inside due to centrifugal force of the mill all balls will collect at one place at inlet or center of the mill to avoid this classification liners was developed if you see in the picture material flow is in right direction and ball moving backward direction after hitting the liners you can see is a degree of uh, small small mills medium size balls and large mills uh, one two and three so the degree is very important to classifying the balls as the degree reduces classification will also reduce so check out the degree so that you get the good classification good classifying so that uh, uh, production time will maintain center diaphragm center diaphragm grates are made of highly ductile and wear resistant heat treated alloy steel while the lining plates facing the fine grinding compartment are made of 50 mm thick heat treated alloy steel this gives you an estimated service life of up to 18000 hours for a grate and 36000 hours for the plate when producing ordinary portland cement from the clinker and gypsum the lifters are radially and individually adjustable making it possible to maintain appropriate material level in the preceding compartment and helping to avoid excessive wear on the grade you are seeing in the picture center diaphragm main work is dividing the chamber into two parts and allows the grinding material through slots to second chamber but not grinding medium then there will be a material flow scooping system you can see in the picture how material takes how material transfers from first chamber to second chamber outlet diaphragm grates these plates are used to form the inner lining on the outlet of the mill the slots in the outlet grate are tapered and the impact of the small grinding media cannot damage the edges of the grate slots the tapering of the slots facilitate the passes of the nips and worn grinding media through the slots instead of clogging them in the mono chamber raw mill the grades at the outlet are supplied thicker compared to the grades used in the cement mill where the grinding media is suited for fine grinding of clinker the tapering of the slots uh, means if inlet of the slot was 10 mm then outlet of the slot could be uh, 20 mm depend on the size so if any nips below 10 mm enters into the slot can pass freely to the mill discharge side so diaphragm will not get clogged you can see in the picture the slots from inside is a 10 mm outside is a 20 mm. lifetime of shell liners high chrome alloyed cast steel is mostly used for the fabrication of the shell liners the lifetime depends mainly on the material to be ground additives like a pozzolana or slag can cause high wear these materials are generally abrasive but also contain a high percentage of moisture which increases the wear rate due to the corrosion the following figures are generally accepted for the second chamber so once you reaching near to this hours you mentally you can fix that liner time has come to replace the liners thank you if you like the video hit the like button and subscribe the channel